Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the hierarchy chart by Aquilon. Now, this is an interesting visual for looking at, as you might guess, hierarchical data. And it allows you to look at that hierarchical data in a tree format, like you see on the screenshot on the right hand side. So you can imagine this is good at showing things like a family tree, where you can see where your family line came from, or in this case, kind of like a management structure where I can see who each individual reports to and whether or not they're a manager or a team lead or a web developer, a junior developer, senior, or an architect. Now, the hierarchy chart is pretty nice because it allows you to actually expand and collapse different levels of the hierarchy to be able to view them and go deeper into certain levels. You also have quite a few customizations where you can actually control the color by a certain value that you might have or a category value you might have. And there's a few other things in there where you can actually control specifically what colors are being displayed. So it's a pretty neat visual. It's designed by Aquilon. Let's go ahead and walk you through how you can use the hierarchy chart by Aquilon in an example. All right, so in this example, we're going to be looking at a family tree. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you ahead of time, other than my name being on this, everything uh, below it is fake. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go up to the Get Data section, and I'm going to go select Excel as a data source. And I'll pull in the family tree Excel file I have here and click Open. And once I select Open, I'll select the Knight family and hit Load to bring this now into Power BI. So you're going to see this loads in here as a Power BI field list, or in the field list, you'll see all the fields appear. And our next step is to go ahead and bring in the custom visual that we're going to use for this example. So I'm going to go up to the From Marketplace section up in the very top here. All right, and so we'll select from the Power BI Visuals Marketplace, and we're going to go find the hierarchy chart. Now you can search for the name of it if you wanted to. You can be, you can search for the name of the company, and you'll probably find it as well. I'm going to go ahead and search for hierarchy, and you'll actually see there's several visuals that leverage a hierarchical view. The one that we're going to leverage again in this case is the hierarchy chart by Aquilon. So I'll go ahead and select that option and click Add. That'll add that visual to my visualization pane. And I'm going to use not only the hierarchy chart, but I'm also going to bring in a table here so you can kind of see the data itself. And inside that table, I'm going to go ahead and bring in all of the data that I have here and just display it as it would appear inside of the data source. So I'm not going to summarize anything. I'm just going to let it bring everything in as a plain old table. And you can see exactly the style of data that we have here. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of this so we can actually read it a little bit. But once you see this, you should get a good idea of the type of data that we're working with. So it has the individual who their, their basically who their parent was, literal, literal parent here, not just a organization parent, but then also what kind of relationship they had. Okay, so you can see these are all relationships to a, a mythical me here in this case. These are people I don't know that are all made up. And I can see the, when they were born, when they may have passed, all within inside of a single table. Okay. Now, the way that this works is it's going to take the ID. So you'll see whenever we bring in the uh, hierarchy chart that it's going to require an ID, and then it's going to require a parent column where we can point to the, what the relationship is and how it's defined. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and bring in that hierarchy chart that we already imported, and we'll give it some space here. In fact, I'll probably make the table a little smaller. There we go. That's fine. And as we bring this in, we need to plot out our data on it. So you can see when you select the hierarchy chart that it is expecting an ID column. So we're going to click and drag the ID on here. It's also expecting a title, which in our case is going to be the name of the individual. And then you can have a subtitle as well. Now, a subtitle in our case is going to be when they, uh, their, their years here, basically. So we're going to select their years and bring that in as a subtitle. And once we start to actually see the parents brought in, that's our next step. Once we bring in the parents, we should see the chart start to fill out a little bit. Now, you'll notice that the chart right now is a little difficult to read. Don't worry. We're going to look in the formatting section and show you how you can fix some of that. You can also actually modify the colors, how they're being used, by bringing something in underneath the type section. And in our case, we're going to bring in a relationship column into the type section. Right now, we haven't defined what each of these relationships, how they're going to be displayed. You can actually change the color as they appear here on the chart based on whatever you put in the type section. So our relationship is going to define the color here as we go through our formatting section over on the right-hand side. All right, so now that we've brought that in, one, the first thing I'll point out to you is that it does do things like cross-highlighting and cross-filtering. So if I select the value here, you'll notice that it does filter items in other charts. So all of those capabilities work. You can unselect, and it'll remove everything. You can also drill in. So if you hit the little plus sign, if I had another level of the hierarchy, it would let me go in. If I hit minus, it'll actually go down or up a level, back a level, in the hierarchy that we're looking at. So plus will drill in deeper. Minus will roll back up. 
So you can kind of play around with that if you want to go in deeper and deeper in certain levels. You can also drill up, and if we wanted to, we can drill up all the way and then kind of take a certain path here. If I hit the plus sign here, I can take a certain path and navigate just one particular path if I wanted to to look, look at and focus in on that portion of the data. All right, so another way you can look at it there. All right, let's go ahead and expand it all the way back out. And the next step we're going to do is we're going to go look at the formatting section. So I'll make sure I have the visual selected, go over to the format section here, and we're going to look at the levels here first. So if you go over to the level section, you'll find underneath the level section that you can turn on or off that little control that we saw here up in the plus and minus area. So if I wanted to, I can turn that off and make it so people cannot actually drill in or drill up on that hierarchy, but I kind of like that. I'm going to let that stay there. You can also control the depth at which you can go. So right now, the maximum depth is uh, turned off. You'll see this is flipped off right now. But if I turn this on, I can actually control the maximum depth. Right now, the default is set to 10. But let's say I only wanted to go three levels in. So one, two, three. I can say the max depth here is three, and then it will automatically roll up to that third level. And even if you click on this, because the max depth has been met, you can't drill in any deeper. So you can kind of control that if you wanted to. I'm going to turn that off. That'll bring everything back to how it was. Just want to show you how that works. Underneath the type color section, here's where you can define the colors that you want to use for each of the levels. So for example, for grandparents, I might make that something like a red or light red for, oh, that's great grandparents. For grandparents, I might make it more of a yellow. For parents, maybe I'll go with a kind of a purple color here, the middle road of purple. And then maybe this kind of uh, teal color here for me. So you can change the colors there easily here. Very Easter-y looking, it looks like. But you have the ability to change the colors there easily. I could have even gone to more of the custom color section here and chosen colors more precisely. Okay, so I'll minimize that. Next, you'll find the node section. Underneath the node section, you can configure the nodes. That's the links that you have in between each of the values. Here you can do things like actually changing the orientation and the height and the size here if you wanted to. So you can see how that changes when I flip on the option here for the uh, display height and width where you can manually modify the height and width. You can also change things like the text size. So what might make sense is to actually bump up the text size on here because it's incredibly small here. So I might want to bump up the text size here, the title size to maybe like a 13 point font. And then you can also bump up the subtitle that's right below it by a percent. So I might bump this up to, let's say, per, for example, 11% here. So it's a little bit easier to read. You can bump it up even a little more if you wanted to. You could also change the color of the font. So if I wanted to make this something like a white, you can adjust that. Or if it makes sense to remain black, you might you know, leave that as a very easy to read black color there. There's also an option here where you can change the distance between the title and the subtitle. So you'll see the title here, is Devon Knight, and then the year of birth and, the, uh, and, and death in some cases is kind of tight, close to each other. You can actually change the distance here between those values by changing the distance on this property. And if I change it here, I bumped it up to seven. You can see it's a little bit more separated. If you bumped it up quite a bit more, it'll be much more exaggerated. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna leave it as a seven. Okay. The other thing that's kind of neat here is you can actually change the shape type between a rectangle like you see right now and a oval or a circle. So if you flip this shape type on, you can see it makes a nice looking little oval here that goes around the values that we have. I kind of like the ovals, I'm gonna leave it that way. All right, as we go a little bit further down, you'll see underneath the legend section, you can change the way the legend appears. That's the area here in the top left. Right now it's positioned in the top, but you can change the position. Let's change the position after we increase the font size here a little bit so you can actually read it. So I'm gonna bump up the font size so it's much easier to read. That's 15 point font there. And then I'm gonna change the position. You can either move it to the bottom if you wanted, or I actually like the auto position here. If you select auto, it kind of straddles on the other sides of the hierarchy chart here. You can also add in a legend title if you wanted to, so you can actually, our legend name, you can give it some kind of a, a name here if you wanted to, so I can do something like call it a relationship or a relation, and you can give the legend itself a name. I'm going to leave it off for the time being, not really needed for this example. You can also change the color of the text if you wanted to, and that's really it for the legend section. Let's move down to the next one. The next one you have here is links. The links are the actual lines that you see between each of the nodes here. So you can change the color of that link if you wanted to, really to anything that you want. Here I made it kind of a dark purple, but you can make it, like I said, any kind of color that you want, even a lighter one if you wanted to, so you can see it and have it stand out. I'm going to revert it back to default, though, as more of that pure black. Uh, next, you'll find there's a section here having to do with warning. Now, the warning section isn't really explicit on what this means, but basically this is going to generate a warning in your report if you have any circular relationships. So think about it like this, where 
maybe Devin is reporting back to Devin or something like that, where they would potentially generate an error, or a, someone maybe has multiple people they they have parents to, multiple multiple report to kind of thing. So that could cause some issues here with the way that it displays, and so a little warning will pop up, and this simply allows you to turn off the warning if you wanted to. That's all that warning option does, so we'll leave that alone. Outside of that, everything else is pretty straightforward. You'll see, that, of course, you have the ability to change the title, just like you have on an, every other visual. In my case, I actually might turn it off altogether to give myself a little bit more real estate here. But everything else we have in here is pretty standard. You have, of course, the background color. You can change the background color of this visual, put a border around it. All those things are pretty standard. So that's really it for this visual. Again, remember, you have the cross-highlighting capability, a lot of interesting things you can do with it. Hope you guys enjoyed this custom visual. Look forward to showing you our next one in our next module. Thanks a lot. Thank you.